All right. Well, welcome to our Exponential Boise webinar. Um, we are getting ready for our live conference online here in a couple weeks. And uh, my name is Robert Frazier. I'm a part of the City Network team that hosts Exponential Boise. And it's just been a, a great time getting to be a part of the online community that's been built. If you haven't joined it, make sure to go to multiplication.org, sign up for the conference. You get not only access to the conference on the 23rd and the 24th, but you get to be a part of this online community where we have webinars and uh, some incredible conversations with speakers from the conference. Um, as well, you also get a digital access pass for all of the talks from the main exponential and our regional exponentials in 2020. So you should make, make sure to jump on there. Right after this webinar, um, Jamie Taylor and I are gonna have a great conversation. And then right afterwards, we're gonna jump onto another Zoom call. And on that Zoom call in our classroom on our multiplication.org website in the hub, in classroom one, we're gonna have a conversation with Jamie and with Peyton Jones. And it's gonna be basically, you get to ask questions and dive into this conversation. So uh, that's a little bit about what's going on. Uh, and yeah, let's just jump in today. Our guest is uh, my friend, Jamie Taylor. Um, she is here in, in Idaho. Um, she and her husband, Brian, have been in ministry together for 14 years and they're planting E3 Church in Cuna, Idaho in September of this year, which is super exciting. We've been cheering them on and excited to see what's going to happen. Jamie published her first book, Finding Brave, in 2018, and it chronicles her difficult journey through anxiety and depression. She loves to inspire and motivate people and keep walking towards their purpose one brave step at a time, and she's going to be one of our speakers for our Exponential Boise um, online the 23rd and 24th. So welcome, Jamie. Glad you can join us today. Thank you. I'm really excited about this conversation. I've been looking forward to it. Yeah. So um, let's just dive in. We only have about right. half an hour. We're going we're gonna to jump in, but um, tell me a little bit about your story and your, your, plant, your church planting story, just in a, you know, a couple minutes, share, share that journey. <laughs> yeah. Where you're at. yeah. Okay. A couple minutes. Here we go. Um, yeah, my husband and I have been in ministry. My husband was an executive pastor for uh, about 10 years um, at a church here in Idaho and uh, loved it there, had no intention to leave. And then a couple years ago, God started to stir our hearts and we knew something was coming. Um, always said we would never church plant. You know, all the things you say you never would do, you kind of, some, somehow you end up doing them. But um, that was definitely not on our radar but God so miraculously moved on both of our hearts um, and softened our hearts towards that idea and then called us right out um, and, and also gave us um, individual confirmation that CUNA was the spot and had, even before we knew like the demographics and everything about CUNA, um, we knew it as a little farm town from Brian's growing up in this area. And we were like, you know, what are CUNA? Okay. But we knew God was calling us there. And um, what we've learned is that this is one of the most rapidly growing areas in Idaho. And um, it is just exploding right now with growth. And we, there's just unique opportunities in here. And we are so excited we moved here and we're starting a journey. We have a great launch team. We, we launch on September 13th and um, we, we are just, we're excited. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been exciting to watch how God has uh, just kind of brought this thing to life the last year and a half in your and Brian's life. So it's great. I, I want to ask you, as you guys are diving in, uh, obviously COVID-19 and the pandemic has been a huge part of 2020. Um, how has that kind of impacted your family and your ministry as you're getting ready to launch this fall? Yeah. So it actually, um, I'll start with the family. Uh, we have four kids, ages 14 down to seven. And um, so I obviously became a, uh, not a homeschool mom, but a distance learning mom very quickly. And it was all in the, in the moment of, uh, right during the time of moving um, to CUNA, right during uh, like so much church planning stuff. And then here I am, four children to help do distance learning. So that was a whole uh, new ball game. I definitely, I have to admit, I had a really bad attitude for a few weeks and I was, I was not a happy camper because so much of our life had just been 
completely, as many people felt like completely turned around. And it was interesting how God just, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me one day and was like, what if you just accepted this? What if you just did the best with this and had a good attitude and reminded me of um, Jeremiah 29 when, you know, that whole passage where he talks about, you know, here's these people in exile and he's like, go plant gardens and go raise families. And, and, you know, this isn't ideal, but make the best out of it. Pray for the peace of the city, you know, and God used that passage in my life to be like, come on, like, let's get a good attitude and let's move forward, you know? And so I did, I just, I just surrendered like all of my best laid plans and said, okay, God, you know what? Everybody's in the same boat. We're all having to shift. Let's just have a good attitude about it. And so that really helped. It's, um, as far as our ministry, it actually ended up being one of the coolest stories I think of, of so far is that it changed because there's so many opportunities for serving. Um, so as a launch, we were planning to have what we call interest parties where we would just send out invites to people. Hey, come show up here. Come talk to us. we get to know us. Um, because of COVID, we ended up having what we called serve parties. And so we ended up taking, we've done three so far, but different um, small businesses in the area of CUNA. And while supporting them, we would provide like, we did one free ice cream for one. We did. Um, Oh, good grief. Now it's like totally going out the, by the window, but, um, we've, we've done, um, free tacos for teens in the park and we've just, we're, and we're still doing some of these things where we're just helping. Um, we did free coffee, helping, um, local businesses that were out of work for a long period of time and need to kind of catch up now. And so that was really fun, um, way to do that. And we've made so many amazing connections in the community and what we, so what we thought was a good idea has become a better idea because of just flexibility and just had to pivot on it, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I read a story the other day online that said that none of us are very good at teaching our kids. So we're, we're all hoping, I think that (laughs) schools open in the fall because like I have a kindergartner and we just basically read a little bit, like that's all we had. So if (laughs) she doesn't learn to read, that's COVID's fault, not ours. We're not taking responsibility. (laughs) Um, I'd, I love I'd love it. to ask, uh, in your ministry, like what sort of changes and shifts have you made that you think mm. will become a part of the new normal for what's next? Yeah. So with our family, uh, we have been, I'd say we've become way more intentional. We, we were trying to do this before, but this, I don't know, something about this whole situation helped, made us really, um, take stock of what's important to us. And we're, we're becoming way more intentional with our schedule and intentionally carving out rest periods, periods for rest, um, which was something that we tried to do before, but I think we're being even more intentional now just to be able to recoup and be able to listen better to God and be able, you know, all those different things. Um, so being intentional with our schedule and, and trying to really think like, okay, when everything goes back to normal, whatever that is. Um, what do we not, what do we want to keep out of the schedule? Um, so we're kind of having those, some of those conversations. Um, and then with our, uh, with our ministry, I would say, you know, just one of the things that's taught us is to just wait on the Lord a little more, uh, and be like, you know what, Holy spirit, what do you want to say to this? Like we had all these ideas and all we had this huge plan for months. Right. And it completely got thrown out the window, which made us have to come before the Lord and just say, okay, like it's everything we have to completely shift. So what, instead of saying, what, what do I think we should do? It's what do you want us to do? And it's not like we weren't doing that before. Of course we were praying, but it does put it on a completely different, um, it's a completely different way of, of, uh, maybe more of a focus where you're just like, okay, literally we have nothing. So just help. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think a lot of, a lot of us are feeling some of those same tensions about what's, how do we do this well in the yeah. future? Like what's, what's it look like to change who we are and yeah. to be more, have more margin, have more space, have more time. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of us would like to have a few more things on our schedule with other people, but not right. fill up our schedule completely. Not fill it, yeah. Yeah, I think a lot well, of 
another thing too with our our ministry what we what it did was helped us to realize how important online uh, ministry is going to be and so we are uh, right out the bat we we are just right off the bat we are just going to be um making sure we have a good online platform so that in case we do have you know our building that we have to be or we're supposed to be and does shut down because we are going to be in a school um that we have options and then also it fast tracked our um our discipleship program so we are already meeting with um, two different groups trying to disciple them so that they can in turn disciple others and making that the act, the focus. And so we did that a little bit sooner than we were planning to, because we want to have kind of that strong underground network, um, and not so much focus on the Sunday gathering. So that, yeah. that impacted it as well. Yeah. I think a lot of churches, including ours have had to kind of say, who can we deploy to lead? Mm -hmm in a dispersed way that we wouldn't have had otherwise. And I, I think that that's a part of what God's doing in the midst of this is making it less about the mm -hmm. upfront and the efficient Sunday gathering with a few people serving and a lot of people consuming. All of a sudden we're all fo fo forced to say, yeah. okay, who can we deploy? Who's ready to dive in and do discipleship? Who's ready to lead and, and preach and teach? Like those are great questions that a lot of us, we were kind of just, you know, enjoying the efficiency of a Sunday model. It works. Yeah. Completely agree. Oh yeah. You're speaking my language. We're, yeah. we're that's the, those are the things we're wrestling with right now. Yep. So what are you seeing in terms of like opportunities for kingdom multiplication in your con, in your context, as you, as you're planning a church plant, what does multiplication look like and what's your vision for, your church participating in church planting. Wow. Yeah, we, our big focus, well, E3 Church stands for, uh, we exist to engage, equip, and empower people to live out God's design for their lives. So um, engaging for us looks like getting into the community and showing them like as cliche as it may sound, Jesus with skin on. So like engaging them, with Jesus through our lives and then equipping them looks like helping them not only equipped in like discipleship, but I think, uh, addressing things like strongholds, addressing things like, um, you know, uh, brokenness and, and especially with my journey, uh, having anxiety and depression, um, that kind of felt like it came out of nowhere and, and has been a huge, huge part of my story is I understand the need to to dive into some areas in your life and, and find freedom. Um, and so I think that's, that's part of equipping is so broad. It's, it's not just equipping them in the ways of the Bible. It's, a, I mean, because God created, he created us, he created how we operate and he knows how our brains operate and how our bodies operate and all that kind of stuff. And so he, he has the best plan for healing, which, you know, I could go for, hours into that. But anyway, um, and then empowering and what empowering means for us is that we, we actually make disciples who will make disciples that they will continually be, um, having hard conversations and, and diving into the ways of Jesus in the Bible and, and using him as the ultimate example. And so, um, I think what, what we have come to believe that is going to have to be really important is the, the discipleship groups on the ground, um, and, and trying to figure out how, how can we spend a majority of our time, not on the Sunday experience, not on the Sunday gathering, not making sure that's perfect and, and the perfect production and the perfect this and the perfect that. No, that is like that, that should not be the focus. The focus should be on the ground throughout the week. Um, how do we make an impact in the community? I mean, we want them to know that we love them and that we see them and that we're here for them. Like that is huge to Brian and I. Um, and then also just equipping those, those people that are, you know, into an integral part of our, of our church body, um, to be able to also equip others. So that's, you know, it's, it's nothing new. It's no new like strategy or anything. It's mm -hmm. what churches have been doing for <laughs> forever. But, um, that's, yeah, I think maybe more the focus is what's different for us that we're instead of like, we're, we're really trying to, to change the 
the mindset. And another thing we're doing is just simple things like language, how we speak about things. Um, we have decided to stop saying coming to church and we are talking about saying that it is a gathering of the church because we are the church. I mean, like what, what did you see when, when COVID happened? Like I, I heard so many people talking about how they couldn't wait to get back to church again. And honestly, it infuriated me. I wanted to say yeah. Yeah. people, you are the church. Like this church, it was never canceled. And I know that you're frustrated. And I know that your little blankie has been torn away. I mean, as, as, as cruel as that sounds, but like, <laughs> you are, language, Jamie. I love it. <laughs> you are the church. You're the yeah. church. And so I think, I, I think COVID woke a lot of people up to the idea that, oh wait, I guess it never was about that one hour on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm praying that that never, I, I'm praying that lesson, um, that we learn it and we don't just pass over it and forget. Yeah, God's stripping away that idol of the gathering. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, well, so I, I had your husband, Brian, on our City Network podcast like two or three months ago. You had all the same answers. So I'm glad to see that like the, the vision sticking. It's great that you guys are <laughs> on the same page. Um, so you're going to be speaking at our uh, on our main stage speaker lineup for the oncoming on the upcoming online conference. Um, what do you hope that leaders take away from your talk? Well, a couple of things. Um, I definitely, I talk a little bit, some practical things, you know, what, what's been good for us and what I think is important, but honestly, what God has been stirring in my heart over the net, I, I would say over the last um, year or two is the idea of serving like Jesus did. And I, I really believe this. If we all would just take the time to serve the next person in front of us. And I don't mean just like people out there, out, you know, wherever there is, I'm talking about if we would serve our kids well, if we would serve our spouses well, if we would serve our coworkers and literally thinking, um, you know, letting the Holy spirit guide and inform every single conversation we have and saying, okay, I know this is an opportunity for service. It could be the smallest, tiniest, little, service, but Lord, how can I help them? Because I think when we observe the ways of Jesus, he was always about, um, you know, healing the, uh, the physical, the emotional, and the, and most importantly, the spiritual needs of the person. And I love the way he took time, even when he was on a, maybe a schedule, he took time to stop and serve the person in front of him. And I think, I think so often we make it this big thing, like, oh, I need to do you know, whatever this big plan. And sometimes it's just like, no, if we all just serve the next person in front of us, this world would be transformed. I mean, I can't even imagine. Yeah. So, you know, so it's something that God has really challenged me on. Um, mm -hmm. so that I literally think of every single interaction I have as how can I serve this person and help them, you know, further along on their journey. So, yeah, that's, that's one thing that it's a, it's a, a quote that's really famous by Andy Stanley, which is do for the one which you wish you could do for the many. I think you're just like laying that out. If you just uh -huh. serve the person in front of you and yep. take responsibility for what God's given you, he will take care of everybody else. You just do the thing you respond. I love that. Love that. Amen. Um, Amen. So our theme, our theme this year is the great collaboration together for this gospel mission. Mm -hmm. How have you seen collaboration come to life as you've been preparing to plant and how's God been bringing partnerships and relationships and yeah. Wow. I am so glad you asked that question because that's something I love to brag about because it's a God story. Um, I, I don't know if I've ever been a part of something so cool where I've seen so much unity and collaboration. When we announced that we were launching E3 church, um, I think we have, I hope I'm saying this correctly, um, but I think we have nine churches who are supporting us in some way. And that's, that's local churches. And I mean, you don't, you don't really hear about stuff like that very, I mean, that's just incredible. Um, and, and you know, you were one of them, you had us come to your church and, and you guys prayed over us and we were able to share a little bit. And I think, um, th just that openness and sit to say, we're all on the same team. And we're all in this together and, um, and our heart, oh my goodness, our heart is to 
to do that as well, to help, to help other church plants. And I mean, because we need more, like that's something I didn't realize until I got in, we got into this is, oh my goodness, there's just not enough church plants. <laughs> there's just not enough. And it's like, um, so, you know, I, there, there was the kind of a, I don't know, maybe this weird, um, view I had that meant, well, there's so many already doing it. Why would we need another one? It's just, I mean, the statistics yeah. will blow you away when you find out how, how behind the game we are. So behind, yeah. you know, I mean, so we had we, what, 20,000 people moved to the Valley and maybe a handful of churches planted this last year. Yep. It's but just not enough. Just are not sustainable. No, yeah. no. So, yeah, I mean, and I, I believe the church. And when I say the church, I'm not talking about buildings. Um, the church is the hope of the world. It's the hope of the local community. And if we don't have that, um, that fire in our bellies, you know, to get out there and, and fulfill the great commission, I, um, I, we just need more of it. That's all I'm going to say. We need more. So, yeah. well, before we go, I'd love to hear, uh, apart from this major thing going on with planting a church, what sort of ministry projects or initiatives are you excited right now in terms of your, your writing, your leadership? Yeah. Thank you for asking that. Um, I am, so I'm about to release a children's book that, um, so part of my story is that I had some significant, um, trauma in my childhood. And as a result, that is some of the stuff that I had to deal with, um, and, and kind of has to do with my anxiety and depression. But, um, through my counseling, um, experience, one of, one of the days we were discussing it, um, this, this childhood trauma and, and, and wondering why and all this kind of stuff, my counselor said, what, have you ever thought about a way that you could help children who have been through similar situations? And I was like, no, I, you know, I really hadn't thought of that, but it hit me so hard. And I got in the car and the whole way home, I just prayed, you know what, God, if you want me to do something to help children in some way, I I'm game, you know, like help me know what that is. And I went home and immediately, um, I believe the Lord inspired this. I just started writing this poem out and it's kind of just this really sing songy kind of, you know, poem it's, it's evolved of course with time and editing and all those kind of things. But, um, it's, it's a, it's a children's book for kids who have been through loss, trauma, grief, those kind of things. Um, and it's just basically trying to give them some hope and, and give them little pointers on how to get through. And, um, I am so excited about that. It is, it's, it's probably one of the, the thing, things that, that I've written or whatever that I'm the most excited about. And, um, so I'm hoping and praying that it can just not only help kids, but maybe even help the parents who are reading it mm -hmm. to realize things maybe they need to focus on as, as you know, um, silly as that may sound. Um, and I, I'm just hoping it to help to a lot of people who have been through loss and trauma. That that's really cool, Jamie. I'm, I'm sad how big of a market it is of people who have had childhood trauma and yep. are experiencing that as family. So I'm, I'm glad that you're diving in and being a part of that. That's awesome. Okay. So my guest today, Jamie Taylor, E3 Church, CUNA, Idaho. And uh, in a couple of minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to jump on, we're going to have like a little five minute break and then we're going to jump onto a zoom call in the hub, which is in at multiplication.org. When you log in, here's, here's a, a screenshot with all the information. You can go to classroom one for a live Q and a with me and Jamie. And, um, I, I know, I know that I have more questions about her being a woman in ministry and talking about what it looks like to plant as a team with Brian. So I want to, I want to dive into some of those questions. Um, and if you haven't yet signed up for the conference, you can go and, and for those of you who aren't in the Northwest, all of a sudden, this this conference is now available to every team in America because it's online. So if you're in a small town and can't afford to bring your whole leadership team to Orlando or to the regional closest to you, all of a sudden you can go online and bring your whole team with you. This is awesome. So jump in, multiplication.org, you can sign up. If you use the code community, you get $20 off your registration. And uh, yeah, so jump in with us. Thank you so much for being a part, Jamie. Really appreciate you, man. Absolutely. All right. Well, we'll see you guys later.